Happy Pentecost, church. Happy retirement, Barbara. Those two greetings belong together, as you will soon discover. You've probably heard it said before, you've probably heard me say it, that Pentecost is the start of something brand new, that it's the birthday of the church, that God's Spirit came down and broke into our earthly reality in a whole new way, and that the world changed at that moment. Or at least the way God related to the world changed because of the new arrival of the Holy Spirit. That's been the basic narrative of Pentecost, and it's a narrative I want to challenge today, or maybe give it a different slant. Yes, it's accurate to say that Pentecost is the birthday of the church, and to celebrate that, inasmuch as before Pentecost, the leaders of that first church were hiding behind locked doors in fear, and were not about to step out into anything new and risky, and after the Spirit was poured out on them, they started acting and speaking and living in a new kind of power and boldness. And it's safe to say the early church would not have emerged as it did without Pentecost. So, happy birthday to us. But if we take Acts chapter 2 to mean that God decided to do something entirely new that God had never done before, then we misunderstand the whole biblical story. The Holy Spirit has been at work, always, According to Scripture, the Spirit began her work even before human beings showed up. In fact, the Spirit shows up and at work in the second verse of the Bible, when the earth was still formless and void, when there was nothing except darkness and a roiling and chaotic cosmic watery deep. Right there, above the waters, Genesis 1, verse 2 says that the Spirit of God, in Hebrew, Ruach, was fluttering, moving, blowing, hovering over. So from before the beginning of history, wherever God was present and at work, it is described as the Spirit of God doing that work. So the Spirit descending like a dove or flame or rushing wind in that meeting of Jesus' disciples in the upper room was nothing new or different, per se. It's what God has been doing all along. So what makes Pentecost so revolutionary for the church? Well, a group of disciples decided to open themselves in a new way. They decided to lay bare their guarded lives, put down their fears and anxieties, and open themselves to this spirit coming. They decided to throw caution to the wind. And I mean that in a literal sense. They took their caution their fearfulness, their protectionism, and they released it into the wind, into the spirit. Don't forget the root meaning of the word spirit is wind. It is moving air. It is breathing. In Hebrew, ruach. In Greek, pneuma. In English, spirit. From the word pneuma, we get pneumatic tires, tires filled with air. From the word spirit, we get respiration, inspiration, conspiracy, words that mean breathing out, breathing in, breathing together. Receiving God's gift of the Holy Spirit means opening up, breathing in, filling our lungs, so to speak. It means allowing God to do the work that God already wants to do and is ready to do. 
in and through us for the good of God's purposes. Receiving the Holy Spirit is nothing magical. It is not reserved for those who know the right prayer or incantation or who meet all the right conditions of belief and practice. It is available to all who open up and breathe in and say to God, here I am for you. There is an invitation before all of us today. There's an invitation to you, Barbara, as you enter a new chapter of life in retirement. There's an invitation to us, church staff and congregation, as we walk into and through another season of pastoral transition. There's an invitation to us, Parkview Mennonite, and the community of people who use our building as we begin a summer of being sojourners and nomads. That invitation to all of us is the same. Open up. Breathe in. Expect the spirit wind to blow. Expect it. We all, Pastor Barbara, the congregation, the community, we all have an opportunity to be recreated by God recreated. Pentecost is a retold and reframed creation story. Acts chapter 2 parallels the first chapters of Genesis. And the parallel, I think, is not just a coincidence. In Acts 2, God's breath, the Spirit, blew into a lifeless lump of humanity, men and women hiding from the world out of fear, behind locked doors, and blew life into them so that they became a living, spirit-breathing community that would bless the whole world, that would partner with God to carry out God's purposes for creation. Sound like Genesis? Where God took a lump of lifeless clay and breathed into it, created men and women who would bear the divine image, who would reflect God to the world, who would carry out God's purposes. See, the the spirit coming of the Spirit to bring life and purpose is nothing new. It happened in the act of creation itself. It happened again at Pentecost. It happens today. Whenever we open ourselves and breathe in the Spirit, we too can be recreated to a full and purposeful life. We can be enlivened and empowered to live like God intended women and men to live in the world, to reflect God's good purposes, God's shalom, God's justice, God's beauty. God's intention has always been to partner with humanity, to restore the goodness and beauty and harmonious diversity of the world as God created it. And it is all dependent on God's breath, God's creative, life-giving, sustaining breath. Are we open to it? Are we breathing it in? If we would more fully open up and breathe in, I wonder if what happened to the early church on Pentecost Day might also happen to us. That we might start living differently together. 
that our fear might be turned into holy boldness. That our isolation from society might be turned into compassionate activism. That we might start going out daily into the world to heal and deliver in Jesus' name. That our self-interest might be turned into mutual self-sacrifice and sharing and generosity and being family to each other. Now what this means for you and for us in practical terms is not something that I can declare from this pulpit as to how in localized and specific circumstances of your life, how you and we are being called to open up and breathe in, I cannot, nor can any one person, proclaim from on high. It needs to be worked out in a spirit-filled community, in mutual relational discernment, in mutual relational support, in mutual relational accountability. Yes, there are some tried and true practices that will help us get there, spending time together with other disciples, building trust, establishing mutuality, praying with and for each other, studying and meditating on scripture, worshiping together. All of these practices exercise our spiritual muscles. They build up our lung capacity. It's like aerobic exercise. They help us be more open and breathe more deeply. And in this regard, there is work for all of us to do. Spiritual work that will bring challenge and hope to each of us. To Barbara, as you leave a role and identity that you have lived with and cherished for over 30 years, there will be multiple layers of grief and loss that you will have to work through. And by the wind of the Spirit, there will be hope of recreation of new creation as you discover and embrace new identities. Those of us navigating this transition ahead, there will be our own sense of loss, the need to grieve, and by the wind of the Spirit, there will be hope of unexpected vistas on the road ahead. Destinations we could not have imagined, but where the Spirit is leading us. And all of us at Parkview facing a, a summer on the move, there will be chaos and confusion and unsettledness along the way, no doubt. And by the wind of the Spirit, there will be hope of new connections with each other and with the community, relying more on the human connection than the physical space. And to all of us who inhabit a world still heaving and roiling, there will be a continuing epidemic of violence and fear gripping us in the form of mass shootings by troubled individuals state-sponsored mass destruction, acts of terror. We will continue to live in a society where ideology and politics divide us and make us more cruel. We will still belong to churches and various church institutions that might be hanging on by a thread or threatened by infighting or sheer disinterest. However, by the wind of the Spirit, there will be hope of new beginnings, new ways 
of learning to live together in love and charity for all. By the wind of the Spirit. If we take the risk, if we take the leap of faith by God's help and open up and breathe in the Holy Spirit of God in Christ. So, Barbara and continuing leaders and church and community, I guess what I'm saying is for all of us here today, as we all stand on various thresholds, be at peace. Be at peace. The Spirit of God is with us. The wind of God is hovering and fluttering above the chaotic waters. We are not alone in any of this. We can be filled with hope. Let us all open up and let us all breathe in.